wasn't forecast for today. Um, but a storm's just brewing right above my house. Look at this cloud. The storm is literally just brewing now above. Wow. Look at it moving in. Oh, it's raining too. It's there. It's over here. Look at where the clouds are moving. It's such a belt now. In this direction. This is the only place in the United Kingdom that's got a thunderstorm right now. And I was just making a bacon butty. Quite often with the beginning of these thunderstorms, they build up with such intense, and then they let that energy go with a massive flash of lightning. And then you tend just to get rain afterwards. That's where the energy gets released. I've just checked on the uh, radar, there's two flash of lightning just south of us now. Oh, I'm gonna run through the front. Okay. I'm gonna run through the front. predicted or what energy has now turned it into rain so this this must have originally formed then uh, sort of off while well, looking at where the radar's going off North Wales but it's got a slightly eastern track to it and it's heading now towards uh, Cumbria Morecambe Bay area South Lakes and it's still producing some lightning so it's on the leading edge uh, of the, uh, but this rain is going to be cooling everything down now so that very much will occur today but it would be a shame not to go and follow its track wouldn't it Proper belting down. I expect the sun to come out in a minute after this. My first port of call is just checking out the local clouds, but look at that. That is a thunderstorm right over sort of Kirk and Wesham, making its way north. Now, it's not really the ideal one that I'm going to go for because a lot of these storms that are starting now sort of dissipating dying off really quickly and its energy revolves into another storm and another storm as they're all pushing north but i'm hopeful but i'm hopeful that the heat of the day should introduce a lot more thunderous activity now as with the rail channel that i do um a couple of people like to help out now and again uh, sponsor or help uh, recently I've had a few uh, that are in the pipeline and one particular one is about wallets called Covert Wallets which is an absolutely fantastic product now I wouldn't endorse it unless I actually believed in it uh, it's it's got like a layer on it um, that protects these from scanning it you know so they don't nick your car details anyway I've done a little advert for it and the link if you want to buy one is in the description area down below and this just helps to support the channel this video has the support from Covert, the Blackbird Slim wallet made from 100% full grain leather with a carbon fibre styling. Slim wallet utilises a Faraday cage designed to halt propagation of radio waves, stopping thieves in their tracks. The Blackbird harbours a secret beneath its skin, a precision engineered Covert recess that can accommodate multiple credit cards. Banknotes are held snug using the adjustable and removable money clip. Designed in the United Kingdom, Covert are so confident that you'll love it. If not, you can count on a 100% money back guarantee. To buy one of these very special wallets and help support this channel, see the link in the description area down below. Scripts, although I have a funny feeling when I get there, there might not be much. It's not negative, don't there? Much lightning. Oh, yeah, look how dark it is over there. Lightning has been detected. We're on, Fuzzy. My thunder buddy, we're on. We're on. I was saying, I didn't think there'd be much lightning. I was going for the hail. There's been some huge hail coming out of this. Uh, potentially, it could be a supercell on the boundary. I'm on the border with that one. So I think I'm going to come off at the next junction, although we're heading towards Shap, look difficult, and I'm going to worm my way around. Try and chase this one. I did.
jump off. Absolutely legged it up here as fast as anything, going off my instincts. I don't think the app was working right because the place is where the dark clouds and all that is, which is that mass over there, has actually put it further over this way. But it has rained here, something has happened here, and there is some beautiful cloud formations. So if I don't get anything but cloud formations, I am super impressed with that, very happy with that. Amazing. But I was looking for massive hail. But it's very dark behind me there. Now, it's, it's forecasted in a certain respect for it to be uh, lightning over there. And there was a little bit of lightning, but it stopped. And it's getting a bit late in the day. It's 8 o'clock. Wind's a bit cool coming from the northwest. Uh, the clouds are actually go in the opposite direction, actually traveling up in that direction uh, towards the northwest rather than the wind coming from the northwest. You get what I mean? But um, it's certainly very dark. Look how dark all that is there. All very dark looking clouds. So I think at this time of the day, and it's taken me about an hour and a half to get here, this is my best bet for now. But beautiful cloud formation. little bit of a rainbow going on there but look how these clouds are streaming down there's definitely ice packed in these these are big and they're spiking up at the tops all the way across here that area there I've definitely missed it I'm about an hour behind but we've got some beautiful I keep saying it, cloud formations going on but that's now disappearing over towards the the east of the Pennines Alston way or in that direction it is calming down so it's pointless really getting the skippy on to chase it the shame really I should have been a little bit more proactive just as we start to come on this side that developing storm I was showing you has now started throwing down some lightning so let's get in the car and let's head off towards Keswick now from one end to the other we'll see what happens there That's just evolving and revolving in the same position as you've got like this sort of flank line, not the right word to use, of uh, moisture and clouds coming in that's keeping that going. But you can clearly see way off in the distance that we've got a lot of dark activity, but there's no thunderstorm in that and it's not even raining. We're quite elevated here, obviously. This is Shap up here in Cumbria. The Shap Hills are all over that way, which is the route that I'll be doing going home. I think in the meantime, we'll have a little look to see other contributions you've been sending to me, some great stuff you've been sending in to me. So let's have a little butchers of that before we carry on.
Oh, oh. Well, that was a big drive. Uh, up, end up going towards Keswick and forgetting it because it sort of didn't work out. Then driving south now, start going dark again. It's a proper, proper cat and mouse game. This area of cloud here was quite low at one point. Definitely a lot cooler now. I've had to put my, uh, my barnet heater on and my little jacket here as well. But it's not been a bad little uh, jaunt out. It's killed three, three hours uh, having to drive around. Certainly looking at some great cloud formations and those time lapses. Hope you enjoyed those time lapses too. But that's it. That's it from me. That's another weather video vlog done, unless anything crops up. Also from Fuzzy, my little weather buddy, Thunder buddy. You say bye bye to everybody. Bye. Yeah. You say don't forget to like. So yeah. <laughs> don't, don't forget to like and subscribe. Ow. Ow. Yes. So please like and subscribe. And as usual, I appreciate you watching me. And until next time, ta ra. Ta ra. Ta -ra. <laughs> oh, Hang on. I can't leave the camera here, can I? And while I'm here, one uh, sort of weather phenomena that I'm desperate to capture on camera and share with you is what they call the cap or the helm wind. Now you've got the Pennines, Northern Pennines area here. Uh, Yorkshire Dales are just down this way. But all across here, on that side, Alston, Tyne and Weir, you know, Newcastle, go in that direction. Hexham, that's it, Hexham. So what happens is, when you get a cold, strong wind coming from the east, and it, it comes to the top of these hills here, it's quite uh, unique to this area, and it rolls up to go over and as it does, it comes all the way down. As it's shooting all the way down and it hits a different air mass on this side, it makes it rotate like a tumble dryer and it sort of does a spinning action. So we're actually in the safety zone, as it were. But if you travel about another mile that way, it'll be incredibly windy. There's been reports of winds of about 80 miles an hour. And we've heard it. We used to, we used to live near here, not far from here. And you go into the next village in that direction, you know, it's about a mile that way, and you'd hear it and it sound like a roaring freight train continue going. Now the hell wind or the cap, it can go on for ages. And then it obviously subsides when the wind all changes. But it's really, really, it's, it's such a sight to see and I'd love to be able to share that with you. Very local to that area. One of the questions I was asked, um, or get asked quite often, is you might see video clips of my radio in the vlogs that I do, and I've explained before, but I get explained, uh, I get, I've been asked again. Now, if you put your radio, any radio set, onto the AM band, which is the kilohertz band, and not on the radio station where the music and the talking, where there's a, a blank spot, and if you very, listen very carefully, you'll hear crackling. And that's the static in the atmosphere. Atmospheric static, static from coming in from space and what we create ourselves. Now, every now and again, you'll hear a pop. You'll hear a, a large crackle. Some of it may be faint, some of it may be uh, louder. In general, I use that as a guide to where thunderstorms are by sort of the years. I've been doing it for years, listening to the duration and the intensity of the crackle. Now, during the day, if it's very loud and it's short, that indicates to me that it's quite close and it could be a bolt of lightning. Or, uh, but if you get some that sort of crackle a bit longer that are intense, that's fork lightning or it could be intercloud lightning. If it's faint, it's quite far. Now at night time, it's a bit more difficult to judge and gauge because uh, interference or radio waves on the AM band travel further so you could actually be hearing storms i've looked on my apps uh, when i've been hearing the crackling the pops on there all the way as far as i've seen them in storms in bulgaria uh, and i've been hearing them on the radio it's fantastic I, to me that's a brilliant thing i love it it entertains me i'm very simple on it. it entertains me but when you're in local when you're in a local thunderstorm anyway during the day or later on in the afternoon and you've got intense <laughs> noises going on on the radio then that gives you a good indication of how active and how often the lightning is. And the good thing about that is you can drive your car and you can listen to the activity while you're looking around. So you're using all them senses together to try and plan and map out where the thunderstorms are. Obviously, you can't use your mobile phone, you can't use anything when you're driving, unless you've got a thunder buddy with you that can help you. But even then, using the triangulation 
um, that they do to pinpoint the lightning strikes. I tend to find that this is real time and it's a lot more accurate once you start to learn, oh, big pop then, once you start to learn um, and uh, to how to use it. So yeah, just try it out for yourselves. AM band, AM, uh, kilohertz on your radio sets and I could just sit there for an hour. It's music, music to my ears. For the record, that whistling noise was a train <laughs> going under the bridge. You can pick up all sorts of noises. It's ace.